right, so now we have a new goal. We want to design a submersible. We are now ocean engineers, and we want to make sure that we can design a submersible. But it's a submersible model. What do we do when we hear the word model? Very good. We model. So out of the different instruments, everyone say. <laughs> Is this an instrument? Yeah, yeah. Yes, but what are we talking about here? Are these the same instruments? What kind of instruments? Tools. Tools, right? Tools for us to study the ocean. We want to make something go to the bottom floor, but this time we don't just want to find out what it is. We want to bring it back up. Jasmine, do you think we can do that? Do you think we can design a submersible model with the instruments we have to bring stuff up from the bottom? Okay, let's see. The first thing we're going to do is what? Ask. What? Ask. What's the first thing we're going to do? Ask. You guys are so loud. Okay, so we're going to ask. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? What material can we use? Materials, what a great question. So we need to know as engineers what materials we have. In different parts of the world we might have different materials or we just might be limited by what we have available. What's another question? Um, how much materials can we use? Right, not only what materials but how much can we use? We might run out of a material if we use too much of it. Yes? What's the time span that we have? I love time questions, very good time. We always have to know the time. Time affects quality, we have to know the time. So here, I have the diagram of submersible. So we have foam for flotation. We have suction sampler that goes down and picks up samples. We have video camera. We have lights. We have manipulator arm. We have the sonar, camera, sample box, sound recorder, temperature sensor. <laughs> Is this all one technology? Yes. No. 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 Look, if you think about it, think about all the different things that have to go inside all of these things, right? Salt sensor, thruster, battery, and so forth. Look, we have exactly the same thing. We have these vials, and these vials are our instruments. Everyone say instruments. Instruments. Now, these instruments have basically the same mass and volume of each of the instruments. So you can see there the temperature sensor, the video camera, and manipulator arm. So when we want to design our submersible model, we're going to use these models of the instruments to put it together. And so that is a model of the battery. So if we take that battery and we drop it in, let's say, a big tub of water, what is going to happen? Is it going to float or is it going to sink? Raise your hand if you say float. Raise your hand if you say sink. All right. The only way we're going to really test this hypothesis is by dropping it in the water. Hold it above like this. Over here, over here. Stand here. Look that way. Be very dramatic. Ready? Who says it's going to float? Who says it's going to sink? All right, remember, you can't choose, it's, you can't say maybe, that you have to make a choice, right? So here we go, we're going to solve this argument with evidence. This is what scientists do. On your marks, get set, drop. If you said sink, you're absolutely right. Give yourselves a round of applause. If you said float, you're absolutely wrong. Give yourselves a round of applause. Fantastic work. What we're going to do, though, too, is because we are scientists, we actually want to document everything we're doing. Okay, so now here. This goes here like this, that goes there like that, that goes here like this. Does that look like that tub? Yeah. yeah. Because I'm gonna... There's no water. Be nice, man. All right, so now here, we're gonna put it here. Oh, there's no water. There we go. Here's the water line, right? So let's say water line. Very good. And what did we drop in first? Yeah? Battery. battery. Here we go. So let's look over here. Oh, here we go. We have another model of the battery. So we take it like this. It went bloop, 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 bloop. And I'm gonna put it exactly how it fell. Boop, like that. So now you guys have exactly the same paper right here. What I want you to do is draw in here what you saw. And you don't, I would like you to label it too. It's very important so we know which is what because this is going to help us decide to build our submersible. Imagine if we have to build this later on for real. We want to know that it's actually going to be able to do what we want it to do. So now, Look at all the instruments we have to test. Now, of course, we do have a time constraint, so we have to figure out how to do this quickly. I came up with a process myself because I am a systems engineer in my own mind. So what I would like you to do, I'm going to call out table one. Table one, send somebody to get a pressure sensor, quickly. Table two, send somebody to get a sample box, quickly. We need an artist from each table, the artist ready. All right, and then we have the drop. Everyone that has the canister is the drop. Here we go. While we do it. We're going to make observations and collect data. Now we need everyone quietly paying attention. Every time we drop one, it's a whole brand new experiment. So who has 
Pressure sensor. All right, Chase coming up. Who says sink? Who says float? We have one sink, everyone says float, let's see what happens. And it's floating, but it's not just floating like this, like the lights. You want to put it on there, how it's floating, so we can see? What can we say about the density of these two objects? Well, this one had less Pleasure. speed. This one had less things in it than this one, so this one is less dense than the other one. Who agrees with that? If you agree, you're absolutely right. Give yourself ten thousand. Very good, because it's floating more. If it's floating, it's less dense than water and way less dense than the lights. Good job. Go. Now we got to move quickly. Sample box, come and throw it in. So now, sample box. Who says sink? You dropped it, man. <laughs> if you said sink, it didn't sink. So very good. Very good. Thank you. Sonar, quickly. Hold it up. Sink or float? Okay. Here we go. Drop. Don't drop the paper one in. Drop that one in. All right, now record your data. Camera. All right, Sarah has, no, we just have regular camera. Apparently there's a photo camera and a video camera that you can choose from. Remember, these are choices for when you build your submersible. Sarah, is it going to sink or float? Sink. Hold it up. Who agrees with Sarah, it's going to sink? All right, let's see. Go ahead and drop it right in. Ooh, did it sink? No. The evidence did not support. Okay, very good. All right, put it on there, but look at how it's floating too. Very good. She's looking really good, making good observations. So we started with the lights and the battery. And we saw there was one that would float and then one that would sink. And we learned that the one that sank was more dense than water, right? So if you look at your sheet right here, you guys have this. Now that we've done the experiment, we can take a look. Here it says, circle the vials that floated in the test, or the highest, in the water. And then which vial has the lowest density? Please fill that out. Take your time, talk amongst yourselves, figure out what that means. We're trying to interpret the data now. You can tell by stuff that has inside. So I would say, which has the lowest density? All right, so now we guys, you guys have a log here. So you have a floating and sinking log, part two here. So I want you guys to read through these and then Write what you think. From your testing to support your ideas. Why do you think some vials float and some vials float? All right, does anybody want to share their answer really quick? Chase, what do you have for why do some sink and why do some float? Because, so I wrote down, like, because some vials were uh, less dense than others. Ah, some vials are less dense than others. So if they're less dense, what do they do in water? Then they'll float. Float. Very good. Um, our, ours was some vials are more dense than others that makes them sink, and other vials are less dense than others and makes them float. That is a perfect statement, just like Chase's perfect statement. You guys are all making the right observations. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, you guys are saying density, and I love that word, but how does it relate to mass and volume? So tell me again, what is mass? Stuff. Very good. What's volume? Volume is um, um, something that takes up space. Right, space. So if it has very little mass and a lot of volume, what's going to happen? It's going to float. What did you say? It's going to float. Right, everyone say float. Float. Very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good job. This is the end of lesson three. We're going to be going into lesson four tomorrow. And hopefully you guys will decrease the mass of your lunchbox by eating as much food as you possibly can. You can't change its volume. You don't want to break it. Most students, they want to be uh, a fireman or a policeman or things that they see on a daily basis or people, things that people talk about all the time. Nobody really talks about engineering. And so the students nowadays don't even realize it's an opportunity and it's something that they love. They love building stuff. They love breaking stuff. They love rebuilding stuff. And so when you give them the opportunity to do it, they love it and they, they say, wait a minute, this is a job. I can actually do this. And then you start applying the math to it, you start applying the science to it, and you're actually saying you're encompassing every skill you have as a human being, and you can turn it into a career that actually helps people. And when kids see that, I mean, that's truly what they want to do. They want to be able to help people.